Hey, after missing the playoffs and back-to-back -back season, there's finally some buzz around this Dallas Mavericks team, mainly in part because of the guy you saw right there, Luka, one of the most hyped European rookies that we've seen in years. And after talking to the team and coach, it seems like that hype will be real. Are you guys excited to watch this kid play? I, I really am. I, I mean, I've had the opportunity to see a little bit of film, film on him over the summer. And what I was most impressed with was his ability to play with good players. Uh, you know, he's not a guy that has to be ball dominant. He's a terrific ball mover, really good passer. And he just seemed to have that clutch gene uh, from the times that I got to see him, Kevin. And I think he's going to be a nice addition to this up and coming Mavericks team. Yeah, he knows how to play basketball. Anytime you know how to play, the game is much easier for you. He moves the ball when it needs to be moved. He drives when there seems to drive. He pulls up and knocks down jumpers when he's open. So he's just a good basketball player. I'm not worried about him at all. I'm kind of interested in how this team blends together because you get some young guys, you know, Smith and he in that backcourt. They're going to be really young. Both of them can make plays, but Donkish probably is a better decision maker mm -hmm. overall so it's going to be interesting just to watch these kids blend and grow because at the end of the day it's how good you are as a collective group not how good you are individually and that's what they've got to figure out one of the things that everybody seemed surprised with when they actually saw him in person instead of just on film was his size yeah. and you know they said he has quickness but it's that deceptive quickness mm -hmm. you know it's not necessarily his foot speed but just the way he moves on the court and his court vision everybody was impressed with um, when it comes to the European game it seems like that deceptiveness with your quickness is something that we see more over there um, from your experience you know what's the biggest adjustment from European ball to coming over and jumping into the NBA well, the level of athleticism he's going to see in the NBA is going to be very different than the level of athleticism in the European League. Mm -hmm. Even though he played in the highest level of the European League, which is very an impressive league. It's much, the highest level of European basketball is much better than any college basketball oh, here yeah. by far. So he's already been playing against grown men, which is a big thing. He's not afraid to go out there and see guys who are 30 years old. He's been playing against them since he's been 17, 16, 17 years old. It's a level of athleticism he's going to see. And then in the NBA, all the windows are much smaller. You get used to playing through a window like like this and throwing passes through windows like this in the NBA that same windows like this right. everybody's a little longer a little bit bigger so the athleticism and just the, the, the court just gets smaller and then also from Dallas's perspective determining what's going to be his natural position to guard because yeah. talking about those athletes he's got to guard that position and so whether it's the two or the three a lot of times that those are the best athletes in the league and I do think the acquisition though of getting DeAndre Jordan helps in that regard yeah. as well because he's going to anchor that defense. He's a guy that can get out in space and help. But, but Doncic is the real deal. I think that trio of him and Barnes and Smith, how they come together to Kevin's point ultimately determines how good this Mavericks team can become. And one point on the defensive end, everybody, switch now. everybody switches now. Right. And so you're going to have to guard one, twos, and threes, and probably fours if you're Doncic. So that's going to be another big adjustment, just the speed of the guard and everything. But he's going to have to learn how to guard multiple positions. And, and I actually kind of like all the switching in the NBA right now. It makes teams make decisions. Like if you have a mismatch, you got a big on a small, who's going to be able to enter the ball, how much clock are you using to get to that mismatch and stuff. So I think this kid is really set up to be a tremendous player. And I wouldn't be surprised if he walks away with Rookie of the Year just because this kid's that good. Well, one of the guys that showed his athleticism last year in his rookie season was Dennis Smith Jr., and they'll be sharing the backcourt together. I sat down with Dennis to ask him what he's most excited about when it comes to his new teammate. He's a really high IQ player. Mm -hmm. uh, he understands the game well. And so far, we've played in pickup together a, a couple of times, a fair share. And we've been doing pretty well together. So I think we can complement each other pretty well this season. Yeah, how, how will he help you improve your game, do you think? Uh, get me more, more shots off the catch. Mm -hmm. You know, I shot a higher percentage off the catch last year, so I believe I'll get more looks like that this season. One of the things that Dennis struggled with last year, he had great quickness, he got to the basket, but his shooting mm -hmm. percentages were down. And so he worked a lot on that in the off season. Uh, how do you see the shots opening up for him sharing the floor with Luca? Well, I think they will. Most rookies struggle at the, in the perimeter to shoot the basketball. Even the guys who are shooters mm -hmm. tend to not shoot as well that first year because the game is faster, courts bigger, three-point shots deeper. Um, and you're also playing against better talent. So uh, I do expect him to continue to improve, but I do think what he talked about. To me, Dennis Smith Jr. is not that natural, instinctive point guard. He's a, a typical NBA league guard. He's going to be a score-first guy, which I think will help him playing with Doncic, who's a pass-first guy. Mm -hmm. and, and so I do think you're going to see his 
field goal percentage rise this year, in part because he's playing with a better all, better overall IQ out on the perimeter. And, and I do think because of that, how cerebral Doncic is, that, that this young man will benefit from playing with him. Uh, Smith has become a better shooter. You know why he wasn't a good shooter? He didn't need to be. He beat everybody off the dribble. <laughs> he really I mean, did. He's just that. I very seldom do see great athletes come in the NBA with really good shots. But when, once, once you start playing against everybody, you realize that everybody's athletic. Everybody can stay in front of you. Everybody moves their feet. Your, your jumper improves. And so this summer, I'm sure his jumper improved a lot. Uh, what I'd like to see out of Smith a little bit more is a little more playmaking. Off the bounce, finding guys. You know, the corners are usually filled. You have good shooters there. There are certain spots in the NBA floor now that are always filled. You've got to be able to drive hard and hit the back, you know, the opposite corner if you're going right, hit the left corner going left, hit the right corner, and things like that where he can get better. That drop-off pass late to DeAndre Jordan, those type of things. That's where I think Smith, his shot will get better, but I want to see him improve his just kind of playmaking. Hey, if you're running point or you're coming off a ball screen, one thing you get excited about is throwing a lob, and now yeah. they have DeAndre Jordan in the yes. mix, and I know both Luka and Dennis Smith are really excited to get to throw him the ball. Uh, do you like this addition? And uh, what do you think is the biggest benefit he'll bring to this Dallas team? Defense. You know, he's going to be able to block shots and rebound. You can't run. And I think they're going to be able to run. Last year, they were not a great offensive team. I think they were like 28th in the league in scoring or whatever. Right. But he's going to be able to get them easier baskets by playing defense, blocking shots, rebounding, then outletting the pass. You know, you get, you get those guys, you Harrison Barnes, Smith, Dante, you get those guys running the wings and get out ahead and get odd man situations. They're going to score easier because you have a guy in there that block shots and rebound well for you. And the other thing he's going to do for them offensively, he's going to create space. And you don't think of a big who's not a, a force to score, but because you have to honor him at the rim, mm -hmm. that's going to create better spacing on the perimeter. Then it comes down to making good reads and quick reads because DeAndre Jordan in that pick and roll, when he dives to the rim, he's going to force help from the weak yeah. side. And if your guards are good at reading and making quick decisions, you're going to get a lot of good looks and opportunities on the uh, weak side of the basketball floor. So that's going to help this group as well. To your point, part of the reason they struggled at times is they didn't have a lot of creativity offense yeah. off offensively last year. They were easy to guard, and they weren't a fast team. Even though Dennis Smith Jr. has electric athletic ability, as a group, they were a little bit more methodical. I think Rick Carlisle would like to see them play with a little more pace is in what we see in today's modern game. I think DeAndre, in a weird way, you don't think of him as an offensive player, but he could help their offense because of that ability to get to the rim. Yeah, anytime you can outlet the ball to you know one of three or four guys, I mean, they're, they're the going to move the ball. No question, you're throwing that ball out to the hash mark, out to half court. You're going to get easy shots off that, even if it's a hard push. And then guys walking into those, you know, the threes, the slot three, top of the key threes that are are open in a break when you're pushing the ball. It was funny, I talked to DeAndre and said, you know, you verbally committed, you backed out of that, now you're back, why now? And he said he thought the Clippers still had more to offer and he could accomplish things there in the past where now he's ready to move on and he's so excited about the youth of this Dallas team. But I also joked with him and said, you can play center here, but you're going to have to play till you're 40. Because <laughs> you're coming in and you're playing the position that we just saw Dirk play the last couple of years, the center position, so that brings the possibility of him coming off of the bench this season. Um, I think it's likely. What do you guys think? I don't think there's any doubt that Dirk probably should come off the bench. In order for this team to take the next step, this can no longer be Dirk's franchise. And First I think all, Dirk understands that. I agree with you 100%. But how can he be 233 points behind Wilt? My guy, yeah. Wilt, that ain't right. Isn't that crazy? I'm just telling you, that's amazing. That just shows the longevity and how good Dirk so has good. been for so many years. It's his 21st season. He's 40 years old. And, and what I love about him is he doesn't want to bring the franchise down. He doesn't want a big farewell tour. I mean, we, we have to view this season as we watch him on the court as potentially his last, which you hate to say. I think he could play three more years. I think this could be his last year. But he's not going to be the guy that wants every team to give him a big celebration when he goes out. And, and he did tell me at media days, I want to do whatever it takes to win for this team. And, and he is one of the most unselfish players we've ever seen go through the NBA. You know, Red Auerbach told me years ago, he said, great players have a really hard time going out graciously. Because what made you great is that you wouldn't give in. What made you great is that every single night you thought you could do it, whether you were hurt, whether you had one leg, one arm, you were like, there, there's, there's a push in great players that, that you feel you can get anything accomplished. Right. He said that same push won't, 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 won't let you realize you're 40. <laughs> it won't let you realize you're 35. And he'd always tell me, he goes, don't be like the rest of those guys. But go all graciously. You're not the player you were when you were 28. I think Dirk understands that. Dirk knows he's not the player he was at 30, at 40 now. And he's going all graciously. And I love to see that in guys just say, whatever it takes. I mean, you know, right. it's hard for great players to kind of say, 
I just can't do that anymore. But he's, he seems to be handling it really well, and I'm, I'm happy for him. Great yeah, guy, too, by the way. Dirk Nowitzki is a great guy. One of the best. So the Mavs drafted Dennis Smith Jr. with the ninth overall pick in 2017. He ended up averaging 15 points and a little over five assists in his rookie campaign, which helped earn him second team all rookie honors. Take a look back at his season. Here he goes. Clear for takeoff. Ahead to Dennis Smith. Got a run out and the windmill slam. Smith to bounce it to himself. He goes over the rim. He jumps up and stops it. He just won next year's dunk contest. Wow. Here he goes. Here's 16. That's just stuff you cannot teach. One of the things that I know you wanted to work on um, that maybe, you know, the numbers didn't reflect so well last season was just the three-point shooting. Right. And like you said, it got better as the year went on. But how have you worked on that part of your game this offseason? Uh, actually, by shooting closer shots, you know, just, just keeping my mechanics consistent, you know. And once I get those mechanics down, then I'll start moving out towards the mid-range and into the three. And it's been it's been working so far. What was it like playing with Luca and Dennis for the first time? Did you develop a chemistry right away because of their court vision? Right and, away, yeah. right away. And I know for me, it's uh, it's it's the same thing. I obviously played with a, with a great point guard in, in Chris Paul for a very long time, and um, I, I think that those guys have tremendous upside. Luca's a, a great floor general. He sees a ton of things that I didn't see when I was 19 years old. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Dennis is a very explosive, exciting young player who I think is going to have another great year this season, an even better year. It's natural for people to ask about Luca because coming from another country and some of the things you guys have had to deal with are so similar. Um, with him being the Euro MVP, do you see a potential for him one day in this league to be an MV NBA MVP? Because the hype seems really big for him right now, but he also still has a long way to go. Yeah, I, I hope we are. we're looking at an NBA MVP one day. Uh, I think he has the potential for it. Looking at an M NBA MVP one day, uh, I think he has the potential for it. Uh, you know, he's uh, he's unbelievable, savvy already for his for his age. He's got the whole package. He can pass. He brings the ball up at six eight, six nine. He can shoot when they go under their screen and rolls. Uh, but what's most important impressed me so far is his court vision at, mm -hmm. at, at nineteen. Um, the passes, uh, the no-look stuff uh, is, is really, I haven't seen much of it in my 20 years. A young guy coming like that and see the floor like that, make decisions like that and pick and rolls. So he's just playing well, wise beyond his years and it's been, uh, it's been fun to watch in scrimmage. But, you know, the NBA season is a long grind and he's got a long way to go. But we like what he brings and um, this guy's the limit for him. When it comes to Coach Carlisle, what is he sort of, when he sits you down and talks about your game and your future, what areas does he feel like you can improve on most? I mean, like he and me, I mean, both agree, like, you can improve every day, you know, you can improve your shot, your pass, your defense, everything. Uh, so you need to keep improving everything, you know, there's a little bit uh, more stuff you can do more every day, but you can improve everything during the day. Well, you know, the Western Conference is uh, by far the toughest conference. Every team is loaded. It's it's physical. It's tough. It's going to be competitive. You're going to learn a lot right from the beginning. When you think of that challenge, how much does that excite you? Uh, it excites me a lot because it's so many great players at, at this conference. So it's going to be tough. That's what I like. You know, we have, we have challenges to make the playoffs, so I like it. What player are you most excited to play against? LeBron James. LeBron James. Yeah. There you go. Well, it's you'll get your opportunity, Luca. Yeah. Well, we've talked about just about everyone except for that guy in the middle, Harrison Barnes. And a couple things I want to get to with him. Uh, six year, I guess, vet you would call him now. On yeah. this team, you have a really nice mix of youth and experience. Um, but would you say Harrison is, is coming into his prime right now? No. He, he improved, not yet? Not yet. I mean, he's still 25, 26. I mean, yeah. he's still, I think the other thing is too, this is only his third year when he's been the focal point of an offense. Right. Okay, so at Golden State, he was a complimentary player. Now he's coming into that role where he's, I think, more comfortable. And again, he's another guy that I think benefits from, from Dodgers. Uh, but he's also going to have to, I think, take on more, we were just talking about this, of a leadership role. I think he's going to be a guy, and you don't have to be a rah-rah guy to be a leader. Mm -hmm. You know, you can lead by example, and you, you can not speak a lot, but when you speak, you better be heard. 
Yeah. And I think he may be the key, the catalyst for the growth of this young core this season. You know, he's comfortable. He knows the system. He's been there with Carlisle for a couple years. Uh, he's gotten all the Golden State out of his system. He's a Mav. And, and I do think in a lot of ways he might be the most important player on this team in terms of where they end up at season's end. From coming on the top in Golden State and now having to work from scratch in Dallas, I mean, that's – that's experience that is so valuable just to see how an organization is run, how it's built from scratch, and being a part of the everyday process of that. And for him being able to share that in Dallas is so valuable. Yeah, he's going to share that. But realistically, he's going to be looking at this team and seeing how good they are. How much do I have to do on a nightly basis? I mean, last year mm -hmm. he averaged 19 points a game. He shot pretty well. He shot 44% from the floor. And he 30, shot yeah, 36 over 200 three. more three-point right. attempts than he did his first year in Dallas. Exactly. So, you know, he, so he advanced. But now you're going to have to say, hey, maybe one of these nights Donkic has got it going. You know, Smith maybe grows. And so as a leader, you just got to look at what's going on and, and – and, you can't be saying, oh, I'm an average 20 or I got I to gotta get my 25 a night. He just got to let the game flow and flow through him. And I think he's good enough to just be a ball mover. He was that in Golden State. And let these guys get off. It's, it's an interesting combination of players. I don't know exactly how good they can be, but I really like their potential. And one thing we haven't talked about is a tremendous coach in yeah. Rick Carlisle. Mm -hmm. Rick Carlisle is going to do a great job with this team. He's going to push all the right buttons. He's going to get these guys in the right positions so they succeed. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I really am I'm interested in watching them. Yeah. I don't know what to expect from them. They could be tremendous. They could be average. Yeah, <laughs> they could be what they were. Well, it was certainly a fun run for Dallas Mavericks fans for about 12 consecutive seasons and then leading up to 2011 when they won the NBA championship. Now, they've been to the playoffs four times since that title in 2011, but they've only won a total of five playoff games. So they're ready to start the rise again with some new young addition guys. And this sort of begs the question, how much better can they be? And will they win more than 34 and a half games? Ooh, <laughs> I know. That's a, now, that's a tough Last year one. they won 24, so yes. yeah. we're looking I, at a 10-game improvement here. I do think they're a much-improved team, and I also think they now have a core nucleus for which they can be optimistic. Yes. Right. We talk about Doncic, Smith, and, and Harrison Barnes I throw in there as well. But I don't know that they can get over 34. I, I think 34 is a good number. I guess that's why they set those lines, because that's that. I think they're going to win number. about 34. That's a big improvement, though. No, I, a 10-game improvement's huge. So I'm going to say over just because Rick Carlisle is my, my, my old teammate. And I, <laughs> I'm pumping them up. And I do like their team. So I think they're going to win over that. I really do. I think they're going to find some rhythm at some point in the season. Get on a roll. DeAndre Jordan's used to winning. You know, Harrison Barnes comes in. I think they're going to get on a roll and you know, get, get over that 34 and a half. I think you can't say enough to having your point guard in year two with Dennis Smith Jr. and just mm -hmm. his comfortability and, and how he's worked on his shot. So I'm going to go over as well. All Lastly, right. where does Luca finish in the rookie of the year voting? I'm going to say top three. I'm saying he's finishing good. number one. Woo! I think he'll be rookie of the year. I'm going on. There. I just think that European experience, he's not going to be intimidated by playing his older guys. Yeah. Big thing for him. I'll go second, only because DeAndre is going to get a lot of touches. Yes, he it's will. It's all about numbers yep. when it comes to the voting. So for Kevin McHale, Greg Anthony, I'm Allie LaForce. We'll see you next time.